We're going to tie a craft for a changer. It's something that uh, we've had a lot of requests for uh, over the last uh, you know year, really. Um, this is definitely one of my favorite patterns um, that uh, that we fish, and is definitely something that I would run in my box uh, the whole year. This isn't going to be something that's going to be seasonal. This is going to be something that you can use, and you can use it in a bunch of different ways throughout the season. You can fish it uh, on a straight retrieve. You can dead drift it. You can fish it deep. You can fish it on the burn. Uh, and if you tie it right, it's just a really versatile pattern. Uh, and just like we tie up our dredging flies, you can keel it differently. Uh, you can throw a tungsten bead in it. And what we're going to show you tonight is kind of the way that I like to tie it uh, for my personal, personal use. But the possibilities are endless. You can get as crazy as you want. One thing that I'll point out, so like as you can see with the ones that I tie, they're pretty wide. You know, they got shoulders on them. That is a key to make this thing swim the way that I want it to swim. So if you tie it with shoulders and, 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 and form that head the way I'll show you at the end, something like this that has some mass to it, has some shoulders to it. 15 in the vise. I'm going to lay down a, a thread base on that. That off. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, my, my filler or my cactus, and I'm going to put uh, you know a couple couple two and a half wraps on here, and that's going to this going to set you up for your tail. All right. So all I'm going to do is just one wrap, kind of clean it up, pull it back, two wraps, and I'm just going to tie that off. Done. That's just gonna help you kind of set your, your tail. Um, tail on this, I've tied everything from a marabou tail to what we refer to as a flicker tail, which we're gonna do tonight. It's a rooster, rooster neck. Um, so that's what we're gonna use tonight for this. Um, and I'm gonna just build you a little tail here. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna kind of come in here in this bottom and pull a clump of those feathers out and these, these feathers can also be used for pectoral fins, for rear fins on that, that, that back hook. Um, just gonna pull them out of here. I'm gonna start marrying a couple of them up. Three, four of them, whatever. And you're gonna probably need a like eight to pull this off, make it look clean. And I'm just gonna go in there, I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna cut it. And I'm gonna start spacing these out around the shank. So again, Tenting, I believe, is the terminology we're using for this. You just kind of put that in like so. Grab yourself another one. I'll cut all the stems off at the end. Grab a few more. Try to keep them roughly the same length. And just kind of work your way around that shank. A couple more in there and then I'm done with this tail. Minus a little collar. So, I'm just going to come up with my scissors, get rid of all these stems, and if you didn't really care, you could put some resin on there and call it done. But we're going to make it look clean, I'm going to grab a couple hen saddle feathers, do the exact same thing we would do when we're doing the Woodsman or we're doing a FGC. I'm just going to come in and give yourself a little clean, clean up collar. Make it look good. Get those fibers wet. And just fold them back as you wrap forward. Cool. You got some unruly fibers, you can just kind of come in here and clean them up a little bit. Take your flexible UV resin. If you get a little bit in your uh, eye, you can just kind of come in here with the feather you got laying around, just kind of clean it out before you hit it with your light. And there's your little flicker tail. And you're going to take a 15 millimeter shank and start moving forward. Okay. Like I said, this thing gets wet, it's going to look real clean and look nice. So we're going to lay down a thread base. You definitely, if you're at home tying this, you, you want to have 
two full pieces of craft fur if you're gonna pull this off the right way. So you're gonna come in here, lay down your cactus ear filler, and you're gonna come roughly two thirds of the way up. And every step of the way is kind of stroking those fibers back. So leave yourself a little bit of room at the front. So I got three wraps in there. Then I'm gonna kind of back wrap on top of it and clear myself out a nice little space to work with that crafter. So just like when you're cutting natural deer hair off the hide, uh, it's gonna be thicker at the bottom and there's almost like there's guard hairs in there and just a bunch of fluff. Uh, you're gonna use those as you taper this thing and move forward. So um, you want it when you guys are making your cuts, just like you'd cut deer hair off a of bucktail or deer hair off body hair or belly hair, you want to cut it right at the, the backing. And in this case, it's a, this is a synthetic product. Two colors. White's going to be on the bottom. The light, the light color's going to be on the bottom. The dark color's going to be darker. color's going to be on the top, contrasting color. So what I'll usually do is I'll, I'll start with the bottom. I'm just going to come in and I'm going to get right in there. And as you can imagine, the rear of the fly is going to be smaller than the front and it's going to use less materials, but you still want to get in there and get yourself a good cut. So get right in there, right? And obviously if you were to tie this in, it would be way too long. So what I like to do is I like to come in here and I like to grab and kind of clean this stuff out, but I'm, I'm not going to take it all out. I'm going to hold it like so. And I'm going to start ripping on this. I'm going to hold it as tight as I can in my right hand. I'm a righty and I'm going to start pulling. And just kind of get these hairs to almost melt and I pull on them and they just they just heat up and you can kind of pull it and get it cleaned out so you got just a little clump on the rear there right and then I'm gonna get in here just like I would if I was doing a like a musky style bucktail changer I'd come in here and clean this up I come in um, you're gonna come in tie that in like so you're gonna reverse tie it the whole way up. So just a little clump in there, and I'm just locking that in, right? I'm gonna grab another piece of the darker stuff, in this case, sand. I'm gonna cut that off. I'm gonna grab it by the base, hold it tight, and just start pulling on that stuff. Get it all cleaned out. Like I said earlier, this is a pretty forgiving fly, so you can make adjustments once it's tied in. So don't freak out if it doesn't look that great right away. You can always pluck and, and pull your way to a good taper. Come in here, do the same thing, right? And lock that in. I'm gonna pull these fibers back. I'm gonna sneak my thread around the side. I'm gonna come in. And again, this is gonna be too long. You're gonna see here in a second. And I'm just gonna kind of build up a little, little finished head. And I'm going to do my little whip finish, whatever you like to do. Lock that all in there. Cut it. Take my UV resin. This is flexible. This is the stuff you want for these type of flies. Pop it out of the vise. I'm going to pull it off the front. Get a good look at what I got going on. And as you can see, the tan is way longer than the white. So I'm going to come in. And I'm just start pulling on this. I'm just kind of picking it out. And if you do it this way, the heat will make it look really clean. You kind of pull those fibers. And you can do this later on too if you don't like it once, once you get it uh, laid out. You can always do it at the end. So now you got another 15 millimeter shank. So now you're on your third, third shank already. You got your tail, you got your body one, and we're moving on up to shank three, body two. As you go, you're just going to kind of pick it apart. Okay, same deal. Throw down a thread base. Close up that shank. And we're just going to repeat over and over again, all the way up.
use rely on that resin to set your 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 shape to this. Okay, so it's not going to look that great right now, but once you hit it with that resin and get it all tight and pulled back, it's going to look real good. Okay. Remember, we don't want the little tiny head. We want a big head.